I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today's video is going to be about texture in fragrances. I've had a few comments from a few people asking me more about what I mean by texture in fragrances and to make a video about the notes or perhaps even the ingredients that really evoke texture in perfumes. So if you haven't seen me before, I'm Claire Smith. I make videos all about perfume, perfume science, perfume history, perfume psychology. And I also just do some straight perfume reviews and also fun perfume tags. So if that kind of thing interests you and you haven't already done so, then please do consider subscribing. And please also press the like button if you do enjoy this kind of content. So texture and fragrances is really something I've only noticed when I've been thinking more deeply about what I'm sniffing. So really when I got into fragrance in 2020, I hadn't really ever thought about texture being part of my sensory experience with perfumes. But actually it is quite a big part of my experience and sometimes texture can really make or break whether I will enjoy a fragrance. And when you think about texture in fragrances, you might be thinking, but it's a smell. How can it actually evoke a texture? Well, there is actually a neurological condition called synesthesia, which in its more extreme forms is relatively rare, but in its milder forms, it's relatively common. In fact, most of us have some form of synesthesia at some point in our lives. And this is really when people experience one sensory pathway as another sensory pathway. So for example, some people very rarely sniff a fragrance and see colours. In the milder forms, there is something called cross-modal perception. And this is really where you might smell a fragrance and then imagine something. So for example, I smell a fragrance sometimes and I perhaps think about a particular colour or I perhaps think about a particular texture. And that to me is cross-modal perception. Studies have shown that when we sniff fragrances whilst also imagining textures or colours, parts of our brains light up that are more associated with when we are looking at something or when we are feeling something. And that, again, is proof of the existence of cross-modal perception. So which textures have I smelt in fragrances and which ones are my make or breaks and which notes do I most associate with these textures? And really, which fragrances should you be checking out to see whether you also sense texture in fragrances? Okay, so the first example is going to be Polony. And I know this is a strange thing to start with, but it's always the one I think is rooted in most people's experience of smelling fragrance in the wild. You have all been up to a flower and you've all smelt that Polony smell where you can smell a sweet texture, a sweet powdery texture associated with flowers. It's still floral, but it, is, it has that sort of 3D-ness of the pollen. So mimosa is really the fragrance note that most makes me think of pollen. It's very yellow feeling, it's sweet, it's honeyed, and it just has this overall powdery feeling to it as well, as well as it being a little bit solar. You always feel like you're outside when you're smelling mimosa. Mimosa really makes me think of summer days and bees visiting flowers. And I think really it's an association in my mind that when I smell mimosa, I think of pollen. So the fragrances for me that have mimosa and really make me think of pollen are things like Unspoken Gesture by Joram Studios and also Fragonard's Belle de Grasse, which has lilac as well. And I think that powderiness really amps up the pollen-y feel of that fragrance. There's also the really fluorescent, really bright, really yellow feeling Mask Milano's Reflection. And that one really also has a very pollen -y feel to me. So that's pollen-y or pollen-like fragrances. The next texture is crystalline. So quite often fragrances will make me think of something that's glassy or clear or just bright. I really associate this crystalline feeling with a lot of fragrances by Quentin Biche. I think that's because he quite often uses Ambrox related compounds in his fragrances. And actually, you know, it's inaccurate for me to say it's Ambroxan because quite a lot of the time, Different companies have different molecules that are trademarked individually for those companies and that are either derivatives or direct copies of the original Ambroxan. So things you might want to look out for would be Ambrofix, Ambrosuper, Cetalox. You quite often see that one in Juliet Has a Gun fragrances. Also, I've started to notice Orkinox a lot more in fragrances these days. I have to admit that I really struggle with Ambroxan sometimes, but in some fragrances, I think it's done appropriately and I think it really lends this glassy, clear, like crystalline feeling to the fragrance and adds to my enjoyment of fragrances. 
I think this crystalline clear feeling can also be associated with aquatic feeling fragrances. And really the fragrances in my collection that I really appreciate and Broxen in are things like Kenzo World, which really does feel very crystal clear and quite icy to me in a way. It's a fruity crystalline fragrance. I also have Imperial Emerald by Merchant of Venice and that really is a lily fragrance. Lily can sometimes be quite heavy, it can be quite spicy, but this fragrance is really light and bright and that's really evoked by the Ambroxan in this fragrance. Ambroxan can really give fragrances a lot of oomph and a lot of power and with Merchant of Venice that's certainly what I get. I get a very long lasting, very projecting fragrance. I think better known examples of this crystalline feeling with fragrances would be beach fragrances such as Vallea and also Fleur Narcotique by Ex Nihilo. But also fragrances from brands such as Juliet Has A Gun. So for example, Pear Ink is one that really stands out for me as something that has an overdose of Ambroxan, as well as fragrances such as Not A Perfume. So next up is Sparkly or Fizzy, and I'm grouping these together because to me they overlap slightly. So for Sparkly, the fragrance notes that I really think of are things like aldehydes. Of course, not all aldehydes. Some aldehydes can smell golden, can smell solar, some can smell soapy, some can smell bubbly but some of them can smell sparkly. I also have this kind of fizzy association with pink pepper, also just pepper generally, and also peppery aroma chemicals. So things like acagala wood really come off as quite peppery to me. I also get a bit of a fizz with aroma chemicals such as amber wood. So I even get some sparkliness with certain fruits, so particular citrus fruits, particularly lemon, also raspberry. Pear can be quite sparkly and also lychee. Also, I get some sparkle from certain spices. So for example, cardamom can be quite sparkly and also clean white musks. But really the biggest clue to a fragrance potentially smelling sparkly is when you see notes listed such as champagne, sparkling wine, prosecco, you know, fantasy notes that are clearly evoked by other chemicals, but are really suggestive of something that's going to smell sparkly. So the fragrance examples that I pick here would again be things by Quentin Biche because he's really someone who uses a sparkly feeling quite a lot. So the one that I would really choose from his output that I know well would be Angel Nova. To me that smells literally fizzy. It smells like a fizzy pop version, a bright pink version of raspberry, lychee and rose. So that would be my best example. But also I would say his Chloe Nomad is quite sparkly because of the amber wood and also because of the citrus. Moving away from Biche, I think there are also examples where citrus and also that kind of sparkling wine effect has been used. So for example, Olfactive O Citrus feels a little bit sparkly. And then there's also Pearl de la Lique by la Lique, which has a pepper note. And I think that's really what makes it feel a little bit fizzy to me. So next up is powder and powder literally makes me think of white puffs in the air but also makes me think of powdery makeup and I think for a lot of people powdery fragrances are strongly associated with your idea of old-fashioned smelling musks. But I think for me there is a world out there where you can have a very modern smelling, even sweet smelling powdery fragrance. So I think if you want a sweeter powdery fragrance the note to look for is something like heliotrope or sometimes Almond can be very powdery as well. Also some resins, so benzoin can really have a vanillic sort of powderiness about it. Also some vanilla ambers can be quite powdery. And with other florals, things like peony, rose, violet, and iris, and even oris can be quite powdery, but also things like cocoa. Really the message I'm trying to get across is powdery doesn't have to be heavy. It can be more modern, it can be quite airy but it can still give you that feeling of something makeup y or something that really does have a texture to it. So if you've been watching me for a while, you will know that I absolutely love powdery fragrances, but I really do love, in particular, Insolence by Galan. I think that one just has this really sweet, almost innocent feeling to it, but it still is just a really striking fragrance. So you might want to try something like Lilac Love by Amouage, there's also the Reminiscence range of fragrances, that which is just relaunched in brand new bottles. I'm not sure whether this one's included, but if you can find a bottle of Dragé, that is a really powdery almond fragrance. 
There's also the classic Musk Ravageur by Frederick Marl, which has this lovely powdery vanilla. And of course, we could not skip over this category without mentioning Chanel. And the two that I would suggest for powdery would be Mizia from the Lace Exclusives line, but also Coco Noir from the main line. So next is a velvety texture. So velvety is a hard texture to pin down. I don't think there's really any particular note that is always associated with a velvety feel. But the ones that I think I would mention would be things like rose, very particular sort of petally roses can smell velvety to me. Also musks can sometimes smell velvety. Also some other florals, so for example hyacinth has that sort of velvety texture to it. And really in the world of booze, I feel like rum can sometimes smell quite velvety. Also whiskey in fragrances can smell velvety. And also associated fruits that sometimes smell a little bit boozy can smell velvety. So for example, plum. The fragrances that spring to mind for a velvety feeling texture would be things like Noir de Noir by Tom Ford. Also, I think Velvet Orchid by Tom Ford, probably because of the hyacinth, the rum and the orchid in that fragrance. So next is probably one of the most obvious to think about fragrance notes that can evoke texture. And that's because it itself is a texture and that's suede. So suede is somehow very linked to other textures such as velvet, but it's just a little bit more animalic feeling. It's a little bit naughtier, but still is quite a relatively clean feeling fragrance smell, I think. For me, suede always makes me think of the insides of handbags. So sometimes fragrances just have suede listed as a note, and other times you, it might not be so obvious. So for example, osmanthus can smell very suedey. Savannah sometimes can smell quite suede Also violet and mimosa and even some resins can smell a little bit suede So my favourite suede fragrance, I think because it's been amped up by the violet there, is Bottega Veneta. Without doubt, that is my hands down favourite suede. But I'd also highlight fragrances such as Violet Ida again. That is just a very textural fragrance to me. And it always makes me think of dropped makeup in handbag. But I think up there with Bottega Veneta would be something like Etui Noir by Mila Harris. That really is a beautiful suede to me as well. If you're looking for a suede osmanthus, I would suggest La Prima by Milano Fragranzi. There's also French leather by Memo, which always makes me think of a pink suede handbag with the rose and the suede. So next up is leather, and I've made an entire video about how the fragrance of leather and smells associated with leather really link in to the birth of Western perfumery. So I'll leave that linked in the cards and also down below in the description box in case you do want to check that out. But for me, leather can be evoked by various different fragrance notes. And some of these are things you rarely see in female marketed fragrances, but they are there in, in other forms, in other fragrances. So Cade Oil is one that you don't often see, but it, it does give off a leathery feel. But also Birch and Rock Rose or Labdanum. Also aroma chemicals such as Isobutyl Quinoline. So my picks for leather would be the sort of the saddle-like smell of Irish leather by Memo. Ombre Leather by Tom Ford and also the old Dior Homme Parfum, not the new one. They're all fab leathers. Next up is one that I struggled to find an appropriate word for and I was thinking and thinking, what can I call this category? And I've really come to the conclusion that blankety is probably the best way to describe it. So this is when a fragrance has a certain thickness to it. It feels like you're being enveloped by something almost sort of smothered by something in a way sometimes, if it's done poorly. And this kind of feeling is really something I've been noticing more and more in modern perfumery, more and more in designer fragrances of late. And I feel like that's because there's been an increased use of cashmere. So I seem to smell cashmere and the texture that cashmere gives off quite a lot of the time, even when cashmere isn't listed. And I feel like it's in a lot of fragrances where it's not listed as an actual note. Cashmere to me smells like a very densely packed powder. Something that, you, that there's no space in between, but it still feels slightly powdery. It's really a fragrance note that's meant to give off the feeling of cashmere. But to me, sometimes it doesn't do that. Sometimes it can smell a little bit woody even. And sometimes it comes off as slightly peppery. 
When cashmere is done well, it can really give off this kind of huggy feel. It can feel very comforting as a fragrance note. I think really my favourite fragrances that very distinctively have cashmere in them would be things like Narciso Poudre. That is a very powdery, enveloping, huggy feeling fragrance. And that one really does use cashmere in really well. There's also fragrances that I struggle with slightly more, but some people absolutely love these fragrances. The texture is just a little bit too much for me. So particular Montclair Pour Femme, that fragrance is supposed to have a snow accord and that powdery feeling is really quite dense, but that's really something that I think is evoked by Cashmere. Another fragrance with a certain density to it, but really that also feels very huggy and very comforting is This Is Her. Of course, there's the sandalwood, there's that kind of milky feeling, but there's also quite a lot of cashmere in there. And really that amps up that pepperiness at the beginning, I think. So yeah, there's really a huge range of fragrances with cashmere in them. And actually a lot of designer fragrances now in, on the market these days have some level of cashmere in them. And I feel like cashmere really is the new ambroxan. That's the thing that designer perfumery seems to be moving towards using in a lot of fragrances. Next up is oily. So oily can sound a little bit off-putting, can't it, with fragrances, but sometimes I really like it when a fragrance smells slightly oily. And I think oiliness is something that's really well evoked to me by certain oily florals. So especially fragrance notes such as Immortel. Immortel, even in moisturisers, always gives me that feeling of something rich and oily. And I also get that feeling with a fragrance note called Litsia Kubiba. So I have never smelt this flower in the wild. I have never come across this flower. I have learned what this fragrance note smells like by cross-referencing two fragrances with that listed note. And I've come to the conclusion it's a slightly oily smelling, lemony, floral feeling fragrance note. So the fragrances that I would put in this category would be things like Venus of Abina by Sana Jardin, which has that Litsia Kubiba note. So finally, soapy fragrances. And I feel like, you know, most people have experienced a soapy fragrance, but I feel like the ones that I'm talking about are the ones with the actual texture. So the ones that literally make you think of bubbles, the ones that literally make you think of the texture of the soap itself, rather than just the smell of the soap. And for me, that one is perfectly evoked by Bubble Bath, by Replica Fragrances. That one, I literally can imagine the bubbles as I smell it. And also in the dry down, I get like kind of dry coconut soap, almost like soap shavings. Of course, other people will think of sort of shampooy fragrances and soapy fragrances. So aldehydes really can be best exemplified by something like Chanel Number no. 5. And also Chanel number no. 5 has Lily of the Valley. And Lily of the Valley is really a fragrance note that can also evoke that soapy feeling. You know, fragrances like Dior's Lucky as well, which is also a Lily of the Valley fragrance. I really feel like soapiness is something that can be either be a smell or a smell and a texture. And I think certain fragrances really play on the texture as well as the smell. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then please do press the like button and please also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And please let me know which other fragrance textures can you think of in perfumes? This is not an exhaustive list at all. And I'd be really interested to know, are you someone who can smell texture, who doesn't smell texture, or someone who is really just discovering texture and fragrances? Which textures do you really enjoy and which ones just put you off a fragrance? I'd love to know. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.